We are living in unprecedented times. Right now, the world economy is really up for a bit of a shake. There is high inflation, home prices are expensive, job loss and job opportunities are simply not there. Um, large sectors which were really the hype and really well-paying jobs like tech and many other industries are simply disappearing and kind of on the decline. And that's where I want to shine the spotlight on a topic that isn't really discussed very often, and it is nuclear energy. Nuclear energy is future-proof, and in this video, I'm going to be talking a little bit about why. Hey friends, my name is Osama, I have a background in nuclear engineering, and on this channel, I help demystify nuclear technologies by simplifying them. I also talk about industry trends and uh, a little bit more about the nuclear industry so that you can stay informed and up-to-date. Why is nuclear future-proof? The reason why is for a few different reasons, but it starts off with energy dependence, okay? More specifically, electricity. Now, as you know, electricity is the lifeblood of civilizations. Um, every single country is dependent on electricity. Uh, why? The reason is simple. Like, not only because its citizens are dependent on electricity, improves quality of life, but also industries. So if you look at a lot of in countries across the world and see their breakup for industrial uses versus residential use of electricity, you'll see that industry uses up a lot more electricity. And this number is simply bound to rise in the future because of electrification of industries due to decarbonization efforts. So a lot of countries across the world right now are decarbonizing and the demand for electricity is simply increasing. Not only here in Canada, but in many countries across the world, you're seeing that demand increase significantly. And this is great for the nuclear industry because the nuclear industry has nuclear power reactors across the world. And these reactors are cranking out electricity 24 hours a day, uh, seven days a week. They're shut down here and there for maintenance and for refueling outages, but it is an asset which is base load operating. Base load means that it supplies the backbone, the spine of a, a grid. Okay, it's a 24 hour energy source that is supplying electricity. And this is what makes nuclear reactors anti-fragile. They are an asset that are producing a resource, electricity, 24 hours a day. They're very reliable. Um, a country can depend on, on them. And it's part of a country's infrastructure. When it comes to infrastructure, as you know, infrastructure takes decades to build. It takes years to build. You have the grid. Okay, the grid itself is a bit of a mega project that takes time for a country to build. You've got uh, electricity producing assets and nuclear is one of them. And there's consistent and continuous investments being made into these assets, whether it be the construction of the assets. So for nuclear, that's where the bulk of the cost comes in. That's why people say, oh, nuclear is too expensive. Well, the reason why is because the upfront capital cost is a lot. However, if you look at a 30 year or 60 year timeline, the cost of nuclear is very cheap because over, over time you're making money, which at the end of the day incentivizes countries to actually keep these assets operating. All right, so you're, you're kind of starting to understand now that the payoff is in the long run. There's times in a nuclear power's life cycle where you have to refurbish these reactors. The reason why nuclear is future proof is because you're constructing these reactors which requires sub a huge supply chain, right? So you need vendors which are doing jobs and, and, and very specialized jobs which can't be outsourced. You're having to construct these large reactor vessels, large steam generators, you need more industry. You need, you need specialized uh, companies which can produce these assets. Number three, you need valves, you need other equipment that goes inside. And then on top of that, you need experienced staff to actually operate these reactors. All right, so this includes operators, engineers, you even got doctors on site at these nuclear power plants, right? Because it's pretty much a city in itself. You, you see that supply chain being formed. For example, in Canada right now, in our nuclear supply chain, it's around 70,000 people which are hired, right? In, in terms of this industry. So 70,000 people and out of that 70,000 people, there's around 10 to 15,000 people that are hired by the utilities, right? Which are operating the nuclear power reactors. So there's around 19 nuclear power reactors across Canada. And so you're seeing that huge, huge amount of jobs. All right, so going back to the life cycle of a nuclear power plant, so you've got the construction, 
you've got the operations of that power plant, you've got refurbishments, all right? So refurbishments are when reactor vessels and also steam generators sometimes, other equipment is replaced. And this is a massive kind of upgrade to these reactors. Sometimes these reactors are operated as well, right? So that they can produce even more electricity, all right? So this happens um, in the lifetime of a nuclear power reactor. And you're pretty much rebuilding the core, which is another huge construction project in itself. And then eventually you've got to decommission these reactors, which also creates a lot of jobs. These decommissioning projects are technically advanced. Uh, you've, you require a lot of waste management. Waste management in itself is another beast because you've got to manage the waste, you've got to store it, you've got to um, move it to different locations and ultimately have a geological repository which you which which requires permanent disposal the that lifetime of a nuclear power reactor creates a few different things number one it creates a lot of gdp growth okay gdp growth and it it creates a very robust energy market okay um the reason for gdp growth is these reactors are money making machines all right you're producing electricity for a net profit Okay, these are profitable enterprises, okay? Um, number two is you're creating jobs, okay? So jobs uh, right now are a tricky situation. This generation right now, post-COVID, is going through, the world in itself is going through hyperinflation. You're seeing the, the cost of goods go up. You're seeing jobs simply being not available. There's a lot of unemployment. And unemployment in careers and opportunities which were which were always very lucrative, like tech. And jobs in the nuclear industry aren't necessarily like tech or any other industry where you're easily replaceable, number one. Uh, these jobs can be outsourced, number two. And number three is anyone can learn about these, these technologies online with a click of a button. The reason why is because, number one, these jobs in... And the reason why is because in, in the nuclear power industry, you, you stay there for life right you're you're basically developing expertise in subjects and becoming a subject matter expert okay you can go and work for a vendor you can work work for a utility you can you can take that um, you can take those skills that you're developing and apply them in various areas like i've seen nuclear power operators that were finished their career right and then now they're working as consultants okay i've also seen engineers that are finish their careers work as consultants or accountants or accountants or finance people go out go out there and work in the consulting area. And so it's funny that in our industry, people say that you never retire in the nuclear industry because a lot of folks, when they retire, they come back as consultants or they come back with in other jobs in different parts of the industry. And so uh, as you can tell, it's future proof. Number two, the subject matter expertise isn't something necessarily you can learn online through some sort of a boot camp or programmer academy or whatever. These skills are very, very specialized. So the world of the internet, you can find a lot of information. However, many things you cannot find is the, the challenges, the experiences that you gain working at a nuclear power station or providing research or um, other expertise and services for an asset like a nuclear reactor. All right, so once you gain that experience, you become like indispensable, right? People cannot fire you necessarily or replace you very easily, which is a huge benefit in being in the industry. Number three is the government is always incentivized across the world to consistently invest in upkeeping these assets. Right now, across the world, there's around 400 plus nuclear power reactors that are just cranking out electricity. A lot of these assets were built in the 1970s and 80s. So over 30, 50 years of you know, of nuclear power, these reactors. So if you look at these reactors, their average lifetime is around 40, 50 years old, right? So that's that's crazy. Like these are old, old reactors, but they're but they're running fine. And and so it just goes to show that if you want to go in an industry which may have fluctuations, right? Like the industry itself has fluctuated in the past, right? Like there's world incidences like Chernobyl, Fukushima, through my island, which have shook the trajectory of the industry. However, once a reactor is built, once that asset is built, that asset needs to continue uh, creating energy, right? So I think there are some exceptions to the case, right? A lot of folks may bring up Germany, such as the energy window. However, I want to I want to point out that that is an anomaly, right? Um, there's a level of pragmatism that comes with 
um, maintaining the energy asset like nuclear power reactors. And when countries shut down the reactors uh, over and phase them out throughout the years, uh, they may come to regret it, which is a situation which Germany is in right now. Uh, overall, I want to point out in this video why nuclear is future-proof, why these nuclear power reactors are incredible areas to work, uh, why jobs in this industry are so robust. Um, and if you want to get into the nuclear energy industry, I could tell you that if you have expertise in project management, uh, if you have expertise in civil engineering, for example, and interest in building these reactors, um, if you have expertise in chemical engineering or or nuclear engineering, or, or even other areas like biomedical or electrical engineering, there are transferable skills that you have, which you can potentially use in these nuclear reactors. Remember, a nuclear reactor is kind of like a house. It's, you have electrical systems, you have mechanical systems, you have um, a whole, whole departments on handling nuclear waste. You have entire departments on R&D, re research and development. You have operations, right? So I think, uh, from that perspective, you can go into a variety of different, from that perspective, you can go and take on a variety of different jobs and, and have a really flourishing career. So overall, I hope you enjoyed this video um, and uh, hope you get a chance to check out some of my other videos where I talk about different topics. Um, and until then, take care.